Welcome to the journey back in time as we take the wheel of the iconic ZAS 968, a Soviet classic that captured the hearts and roads alike. In the heart of Cold War, and then when the industrial landscapes of the Soviet Union, a unique and unmistakable design emerged, a design that would come to symbolise the entire era. This charming car boasted a compact boxy silhouette with the rounded edges and a horizontal fork spark grille, giving it no nonsense utilitarian look. Even on the budget, Zaz didn't skip on style with the chrome accents and the bumpers, door handle and radiator rims, and not to the chrome era of automotive trends. But prior to our test drive, we must rewind the clock and understand the profound significance the Zaz had on the general public and nation at that time. The Zaz was born out of a desire to challenge American and European car manufacturers by offering affordable and accessible vehicles to a broader audience. At that time, not many factories in the Soviet Union could keep up with such large demand, so production was moved to Zaporozhye in Ukraine, which is where the name Zaz comes from. The effort for such mass production was aimed to demonstrate the Soviet Union capabilities to compete with Western automakers. However, it was a tough task since the West was already miles ahead in automotive development. At that time, for an average person, owning a car like Moscow or Volga was financially and socially out of reach. Cars, along with many other goods, were in low supply and getting one was incredibly challenging. Waiting lists were tremendously long, and even if you managed to save up enough money, which could be 30 times of your monthly wage, your chances of actually getting a car were quite slim. If you were lucky, you would get one in 2-5 to five years after the day of your purchase. Now, the Zaz wasn't the most comfortable or prestigious car, but it was the most affordable option by far. It cost half as much as Gigoli and a third price of the Volga, making it accessible to the majority. There are means to talk about the design. It was produced in 1971, and there was still a debate about whether Soviet specialists created the Zaz from scratch, or if they borrowed some of the design and engineering elements from the Western manufacturers. The similarities become quite apparent when you compare the Zaz to the German NCU Prince 4 and the Chevrolet Corvair. On the other hand, earlier models of the Zaz closely resembled to the Fiat 600. One of the most intriguing features of the Zaz is its rear engine placement, like it was done in Volkswagen Vitola at that time. It's enabled to maintain a compact design while giving enough legroom for driver and the passengers. So under the hood, or boot, we have the proud air-cooled V4 engine producing around 40 brake horsepower. And given the car's weight of just 650 kilograms, it proved to be more than capable of reaching the speeds of 70 to 80 miles per hour. Despite the need for rapid production, these cars had constant quality issues. They frequently broke down, had electrical problems, suffered engine leaks and overheating right off the assembly line. The chassis lacked reinforcement, with the body sheets under 1mm thick, so even a minor damage could deform the entire body. This is noticeable when you attempt to close the door multiple times. However, for the new car owners, these issues were insignificant because it was still their own car at the time when something like private ownership was rare. Due to the constant need for repair works, it was a common practice for Soviet men to drop the engine and carry it home for the winter storage or rebuild. This V4 engine weighted only 105 kilograms, which could be detached from the car in a matter of minutes and taken home for storage. So it's a common practice to keep the engine in the kitchen or bedrooms for the winter. The fact that the car was made affordable is seen by the interior, which has nothing except a few switches, a choke, electric wipers and a gas heater switch. Surprisingly for its size, the, it feels sort of okay comfortable sitting inside there. There was clearly more space than it seems like. Yet, the pedals are positioned to the right of the seat, causing the driver to sit somewhat sideways. Like all the other cars in Soviet Union, Zaz had two options for starting the engine. One was through the electric starter, and the other one was using the hand crank starter.
The gearbox has four gears, which solve the problem of having first two gears being too short and not giving enough acceleration dynamic to comfortably reach into the long third. The gears here have a mirroring effect to where the first gear is located on the opposite side than usual. The car definitely has the potential for racing, especially with the original double exhaust, which is just too loud. No idea how people could travel long distances with that much noise in a cabin. I guess they just had no choice. The luggage compartment is in the front, housing a battery, a spare tire, and a gasoline heater. Zaz featured an autonomous heater which drew a small amount of petrol from the fuel tank, igniting it to generate heat. This heat was then distributed to the engine and the car interior through a series of pipes and vents. This means that Zaz owners didn't need to wait for the engine to warm up during the cold winters to get hot air in the car, as they had an extra motor to do that. However, the Zaz autonomous heaters had a reputation for occasional fires due to design and maintenance issues, making it somewhat too risky to use. Since Zaz was a working horse for general public at the time when there were no adequate roads, the position of the engine in the boot served as the key element for the success of the car. By putting more weight on the rear tyres while maintaining low chassis weight enabled it to be an awesome off-road vehicle capable of outperforming most of the modern cars. So same as the landies in the UK were help for farmers, Zaz performed an equal job in Soviet territories. We could talk more about the horrendous noise inside the cabin, the stubborn doors and the hood popping at speeds over 40 miles per hour. Yet all of these quirks merely add on to the Zaz's weakened driving charm, making maintenance part of the adventure. Despite its many problems, this car always brings smiles, especially in the traffic. It's forever linked to the childhood memories, hours spent in the garage and the golden days of the past. The Zaz 968 lives on, not just as a machine, but in the hearts of those to whom it became the first car and a gateway to the open road adventures.